Well, good day, good morning, and welcome to the channel. As you can see, I've got the Nikon Z9, the Nikon 500 5.6, a 1.4 converter. I can't talk too much because we have got a beachstone curler in front of us. It's unexpected. I haven't seen one in years, and I need to photograph it. So I'll talk later about what's going on. For now, I just need to photograph this beachstone curler. Quite like that. Beautiful light. Ooh. Raven right next to me. Huh? I said, "It's a raven right here." <laughs> oh, this is when you need a zoom lens. Okay, so the sun's gone behind some clouds. But we've got a very curious Australian raven in front of us, a juvenile, and I'm using the autofocus of the Nikon Z9. It's my mate Gerard, so thanks Gerard for lending it to me. There's two autofocus modes that we've currently got. The first one is just wide area, is it? Wide area? And I can hold it down, you can see the red box. That's our area. And then we've got the tracking, which we can see the green box around the eye of the bird there. So now if I want to track it without the wide area, I can hold down the FN button on the front of the camera and we can see now that it's just the green box and we can just recompose as we want. And the thing is, with these cameras, you can set them up in so many ways, there's no right or wrong way. So we've got a beat the beach stone curly still here. I can't quite see its feet, and I'd rather have its feet. We've got a heap of seagulls in front of us, silver gulls. I don't want to get their photos taken, check it out. Ideally, we want them to come up to it. Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any light at the moment, which is, well, direct sunlight, which is a bit of a bummer. Oh, oh you... <laughs> that gull literally walked right in front of the bird as it was... <laughs> It's an incredible morning so far. I can't believe that bird's here. I'm having fun with the Nikon. Where else would you rather be? The sun's coming up, just amazing. <laughs> Still a bit sinky in places. Might just get a shot straight back into the sun. This angle here, I'll just quickly try it and see. You could get yourself quite an arty shot here. If the stick wasn't there, it would be quite nice because you've got this beautiful background. So I've noticed that the sunrise is coming up with some nice color. We've walked behind the bird and I'm getting a silhouette. I'm getting the beautiful colors. We've got the bird. Oh, I love this shot. This might be my favorite shot of the morning. This is amazing. This is what I'm going for. These nice habitat sort of creative looking shots. I really hope this shot turns out. I really do. Oh, coming towards us. We've got boats all in the background.
So this is amazing. This bird, I've only seen it once down here before and that was 10 years ago. So it's mainly up the northern part of Australia. It doesn't really come down this far. So I'm currently on the coast of New South Wales, um, a place called Shoalhaven Heads. Um, I drove six, seven hours yesterday to get here um, and was not expecting this bird and just so happy to see it here. It's quite calm, it's on its own. Um, not sure what it's doing here, but it's just standing on the sand. It's probably about 30 meters away, something like that. We've got changeable light at the moment, so it's moving. Just awesome. So the very early impression so far is the tracking's actually very good. So the curlew walked behind a branch and you saw how the focus point just tracked it as it went behind the branches. Now, so the only difficulty that I'm having so far is that to get the tracking, you need to hold down um, AF on and another button. So you need to hold down two buttons to get the tracking on its own, which takes a little bit of getting used to, but once your fingers figure out what to do, I prefer, at the moment, I prefer Sony and Canon, how I can just push one button and it just stays tracking the whole time. And the camera's pretty heavy. I think it's 1.2 or 1.3 kilos, so it doesn't balance on my gimbal, especially with this monitor, so which makes it a little bit difficult. This lens is very light. What a ripper of a morning. What's the plan? Where do you, what do you want to do now? Yeah, for sure. Yep, all right. So we're going to go and try and find some godwits in colour, um, which is a bartel godwit, and they're about to leave here. So they fatten up here in our summer, and they fly to Siberia and Alaska, which is incredible. The longest flight of any bird. And there's a few here that haven't left yet, so they're quite plump. They get a red plumage, and we'll go and try and find some, get some photos. That's the plan. So let's go. Well, that was amazing, mate. That was incredible. Yeah, mate, that was awesome. So we've just crawled on our knees. <laughs> it's a bit like sandpaper. My knees are going to hurt after this. We've found a godwit, but it's just moved away a bit too far away. So we've got a little red cap plover. So a little red cap plover, it's endemic to Australia. Oh, the male is very close now.
One of the keys with shorebirds is often just to lay here and wait and they will come to you. Okay, so we had a go with the godwits here, but unfortunately we didn't have any luck. The male just kept walking away from us. Got some really good shots of the female, um, or the non-breeding plumage, which is really cool. And we got lots of little red cap plovers, and it's just great to see them, and they come up to you, and they bob, and they carry on. They don't even care we're here, and it's just awesome. Got lots of shots. The Nikon's performing extremely well. I don't have any issues whatsoever so far. Great being back, a lot of memories. This was my home turf for about oh, eight years or so, but I haven't been back here for nearly four years. So, so stoked to be here. Um, great to be with a mate, sharing the experience. It always makes it even better, so uh, just awesome. Just as we're walking back to the car, <laughs> we came across some godwits just feeding on the water's edge and the light's not quite right, the angle's not quite right, so the shots didn't quite work out. And that's the way it goes sometimes, you just take the good with the bad, but we did see them, we got some shots. So pretty awesome just to see them. The sun's come up now, we've called it a morning. We are going to go out this afternoon, so we're going to head back, have a nice cuppa, relax, reflect on the wonderful morning, and then do it all again this afternoon. <laughs> so the only issue with going to the beach is you get covered in sand, sand on your gear, sand on yourself. Thankfully here at this spot they actually have a bit of a shower so I can wash myself off and at least clean up a little bit before we head back, so that's what we'll do now, get washed off. So I'm just at a place called Kalbara Beach and I've just seen this beautiful display here and it brings a smile to my face because many of these images I actually took and donated for this wall and obviously my little turns, my pied oyster catcher and there's a few different photos here from many wonderful photographers including my dear friend Matt and Lachlan and a few others but it's just awesome when you see your photos used in this way to educate people and highlight the, you know, how they need protecting and, and their life journey. So just one of those reasons to get out there with your camera and take photos is to get displays like this. Well, we've driven about 40 minutes south of where we were and we've come to the incredible Jervis Bay National Park. It's on the south coast of New South Wales. It is incredible here. You can see we're on the cliffs here. We've got the ocean. There's an old lighthouse up here. The reason we're here is there is a critically endangered eastern bristlebird at this location. It's a unique bird. It doesn't look all that pretty, but it's just incredible. And I've been here before, I photographed it here years ago. We've come back to see if we can find it, and it runs around on the ground, so it can be a little bit tricky to pick up. It jumps up onto these rocks, and ultimately, well, you just have to be in the right place at the right time, and we're gonna get, hopefully, get some shots of it. We can hear it calling. There's a few birds here. There's also white-browed scrub wren. There's New Holland honey eater. There's uh, a few different birds, so um, obviously still shooting. I'm hand holding now, so it's actually quite light. Like this camera does weigh, I think about 1.2 kilos. I'll put it on the screen, but this 500 5.6 is so light. It's actually incredible how light this lens is. A 500 millimeter this lens is just amazing. Kind of wish we had a lens like this on Canon, to be honest, but um, we're just gonna see how we go. So I'm excited, so let's get into it. <laughs> got bristle birds just running around here and there's two of them, I don't know if they're two males or two females, but they're chasing each other and occasionally they pop up on a rock and we get different shots and uh, it's just awesome. pretty good so far. Um, I've spotted some other birds so we're just going to see what we can get. A New Holland honey eater actually flew on top of a, a little bush here. The thing with, that makes this location so good is that this habitat, this heath habitat, is quite low as you can see. So the birds will often jump up and land on top of this vegetation allowing a nice clean background and you don't have bushes and things in the way. It's just ideal 
for bird photography and there's a lot of different honeyeaters and things just popping up randomly. You get some shots and it's just awesome. Um, the weather's not the best, it's a little bit overcast, but it doesn't really matter too much for these little bush birds. In fact, it often works in your favour because you don't have shadows and things like that. <laughs> so we're having an amazing time and believe it or not, we just got a white browed scrub wren on a rock. They're out in the open here, which is very strange. They're usually in the dense scrub, hence scrub wren. And we both probably got our best ever shots of this bird. We're having an amazing afternoon. We're extremely lucky. We've had Eastern yellow robins. <laughs> there was like four of them. And they were just going around this vegetation so low that they're just perching nonstop on top of different things and rocks. It's not a rock robin, but it possibly could be. But, uh, the Eastern yellow robin, Eastern bristle bird, white browed scrub wren, New Holland honey eater that's landing everywhere. Unbelievable success and uh, we're both smiling ear to ear. So uh, if we can get a southern emu in, that would be awesome. But the weather's slowly turning in and it's getting some very dark clouds I'll show you here. I don't know if you can see those dark clouds there, but uh, these dark clouds, rain's on its way, so we've got to make the most of it while we can. I don't think you're going to believe me, but we got Mally emu <laughs> The birds are jumping around. These birds are tiny little wrens and they've got the most awesome tail. The male has this blue throat. Unbelievable. Oh, did you hear that? <laughs> got birds right behind us. Oh, hello. There's a bird in this bush. <laughs> Call it out. I mean, it's a bristle bird. <laughs> There is a bristle bird right here. Critically endangered bird right here. <laughs> what a way to end the session. Almost as if the bird was saying goodbye. So we've had a great day. Um, love this lens, it's so light. It seems very sharp, seems quick to focus. The Z9, it is a beast of a body. It's a brute of a thing, it's massive, but it's sturdy as, it's you know a solid professional camera. I didn't really have too many issues with the autofocus today, to be honest. Um, I did just use the wider area, I think it's called, most of the time. I did use 3D tracking a few times, but no drama. Um, now, this isn't a review. This is just purely me having fun with a camera in the field. I will try and get a Z9 and maybe the new 600 or the 800 in the future to do a, like a review and spend more time with it. Today was just having fun, and I had a lot of fun. So big thanks to Gerard for letting me use his kit and it was great to catch up with him. We had so much fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know why you love your Nikon. Uh, what photos did you like today? Get a conversation going. I love reading those comments. Thanks to all the members who directly support the channel. I value that, it enables me to come on and get away on trips like this with my mates and photograph birds, which is what I love to do. So um, give it that thumbs up. Thanks to everyone. Happy birding. We'll see you in the next one. See you later.